really hope that this is filming me. I can't really tell, but I also can't really check. I just thought that I could make this quick little video so that we could talk about Eternal Sunshine, which is Ariana's new album. Oh, where fell? Damn, why are there so many cars? I pretty much just wanted to talk about Ariana's new album because um, it's so great. It's like so unbelievably great. Also, this is, I'm pretty sure that this is illegal, like driving around and recording. So I'm probably gonna like park at the nearest park or something and just sit there and talk. But until I get somewhere, I just wanted to talk about the album. So first of all, we can't be friends. Not only was that song my top of the whole album, but the music video to it was absolutely everything. I can't even believe that we already have Eternal Sunshine. Like, it's already ours. It feels like it was just... I'm not even kidding. I know this is said a lot, but I really do feel like it was just yesterday when Ariana was posting about Yes And. Like, I just, I just can't believe it. Time flew. Anyways... We can't be friends. The music video was so emotional. I love, love, love the sentiment behind it. All the references to Eternal Sunshine, the movie, and also just, oh, and also just the references to her marriage, her divorce. Oh my gosh, it's not falling. To her divorce. Guys, I'm parking soon, don't worry. Um, I don't know. It was just all so meaningful. And Chris Evans. Hello. Guys, I was just editing that and my dumbass really said Chris Evans. What the fuck? What the fuck? Why do I always I always do that? Is because they have Evans both on their names, like Chris Evans and then Evan Peters. Anyways, no, that that was just so stupid of me. I am so so sorry. I was not expecting that at all. I remember I saw the video and I was like, wait, that guy looks so familiar. He looks like Tate from American Horror Story. And then I asked, uh, I told my friend, one of my friends, and he said that indeed it was. And then I looked it up because I didn't know his name. Like I had forgotten his name. Anyways, that song is literally everything. I love the sentiment behind it. I just, I just love it. And also, bye. Bye. Like, okay, so when I ranked all the songs this morning, which was a difficult, difficult choice, but when I did that, I had put We Can't Be Friends, Imperfect For You, and Bye as my top three, right? And then, like, like the more I listen to Bye, the more I feel like, hi, oh my gosh, it's so sweet, so cute. Um, the more I feel like it's, my favorite like i don't know it was just so unbelievably good i i knew it was gonna be good because it's ariana and like come on now but i just didn't think it was gonna be that good if that makes sense because i had seen some posts about how it was gonna be about her divorce and like she had said it wasn't really like a fuck you type of situation but it also it was just like reminiscing on everything on the time that they spent together and putting it into a song pretty much and i was just like it's probably gonna be a slow song you know not too catchy um but i still like it girl that was crazy like he, i should have recorded my reaction because my jaw was to the floor to the floor bye is literally literally one of my most favorite songs ever probably and i don't even know why like what it is about it it's just so so good i love it and it really wasn't like a fuck you to dalton just like a i mean it's over we had our time i love the line about courtney courtney just pulled up in the driveway that is so iconic and perfect for you was also just great I love the sentiment behind it. I love it. And I had put it at number two this morning, but I honestly think that I'm going to move it around. And I'm going to say that we can't be friends by and then perfect for you are in my top three. 
so I'm just switching by and imperfect for you but that song is still so great I literally have um, I just brought it I literally have my notes right here <laughs> just about my thoughts I sent this to my friend um, it's it's super super long just like everything that I feel about each song and perfect for you was just such a sentimental song i really adore it and i put here that my favorite lines were but i'll hold your hurt in the box here beside me and now i can't go anywhere without you but i was re-listening to the album earlier today and i i was like changing my favorite lyrics i like the part where she this part Like, I don't know. I just, I just love it. I just love it. Anyways, the rest haven't really changed. I put Ordinary Things at number four. I just love that song as a closer for the album. I love Nona's voice at the end and then Ariana's laughter to really end it. Um, I just feel like ending the album with Ariana's laughter really ties everything together and really ties the meaning behind the album together i mean she's gotten progressively better and i don't want to say that ariana was a bad person in her thank you next era or, or any of her other eras because she wasn't she's always been a sweetheart but she did have her moments and i just feel like within this time period where she started wicked and until now she's just been so calm and like she's been reminiscing on all of the past and everything that's happened in her life and she's just grown into such such a peaceful and lovable person and she's just so so sweet she's so cute and i love her so much for all these all this progression that she's made i mean i'm sure that that's extremely difficult to just take some time away from something you love and step into this role which also she loved i'm so happy that she's galinda or glinda i don't know if it's galinda or glinda but i'm gonna say galinda i'm so happy that she got her dream role that's literally everything I'm so excited for the movie but i feel like in a way she part of her is always gonna be stuck in wicked or with galinda and i feel like that's that's her personality now she wishes nothing more but to radiate glinda energy i feel like but she's also ariana grande she's not she's not glinda she's ariana grande but just like i don't know i feel like she's changed so much and she's progressed so much in a sense her voice is super soft and sweet also ever since the role and i just i love it she's so comforting eternal sunshine is also super comforting and i just love that for her so continuing my ranking and number five i had put eternal sunshine i love the sentiment behind the song i love the lines where she's saying like i got this good boy he's on my side wait hold on hold on i'll play it i don't want to and her little laughter, she's so cute. I'm just gonna assume she's talking about Ethan, but <laughs> I don't know. We we can't just assume that I'm just taking my takes on that. I just I don't know. I feel like she's just saying that <laughs> I don't know who she's referencing when she says you're just my eternal sunshine i because i, I kind of feel like she's saying i found this good boy now you're just my eternal sunshine like you're just the person that led me up to all of this all of this happiness in a sense like the pain caused her happiness caused her to find her eternal sunshine and i i'm just assuming but anyways let's move on from that and then um Next, at number six, I put The Boy Is Mine because this song was so unbelievably catchy also. Like, 
Bye and The Boy Is Mine were so catchy and they hit for no good reason. I just love, love, love that song. I feel like it's super fun. At number seven, I have put Intro, End of the World. I love this song for like the introduction of the album. I feel like it really, it, it just gives you a little feel of what you're going into. So I just, I really like it. Yes, and I put at number eight, but honestly, I, oh my gosh, I don't want to move it down, but I also feel like it, I don't know, I don't know. The song, I love the song, this is the first song that we got from Ariana that led us into Eternal Sunshine, but I just feel like every single song individually was so great that it, it was so hard to rank these, but anyways. At number nine, I have put Supernatural. At number 10, I had put True Story. At number 11, I put I Wish I Hated You. At 12, I put Don't Want to Break Up Again. And at 13, I put Saturn Returns Interlude. Okay, so that's pretty much my ranking as of today, which is March 8th of 2024, 6.30 p.m. I am not... I'm, I didn't put specific songs in the ranking just, like, because they're bad. None of them are bad at all it was it was just such a difficult decision that basically there's only 13 songs so not even number 13 was bad it doesn't mean it's the worst song in that album because it's really not it's literally a no skip album and yeah that's pretty much it that's all i really wanted to talk about i just i i wanted to talk about eternal sunshine because i'm just so happy oh i can take my seatbelt off now i'm parked what the heck and i'm just so happy that it's ours i'm just so happy to have it and i'm so happy that ariana is back and i can't wait for her performances and her upcoming music videos if there is any more i think there is but you know and touring i i really hope that at one point she does do a, another tour but i i also don't feel like she should have that pressure she's really busy with wicked and press and all that so i just I just hope that she doesn't feel pressured to tour again. Anyways, that's pretty much it. Stream Eternal Sunshine, please. It's such a great album. If you haven't listened already, please listen. It's so great. I haven't seen a single hate comment. And it's number one on Billboard, I think. I know it reached number one on iTunes, but I just saw a post that it reached number one on something else. Anyways, it's number one. That's all you need to know. Okay, anyways, bye!